How's it going, everyone? It's going really well. Welcome to Hockey Prodigy. Welcome to Hockey Prodigy. And today we are talking to Danny Campbell. Danny Campbell. <laughs> Danny Campbell is the head coach and founder of Prolific Hockey, and he's joining us today all the way from Ontario, Canada. You ready to get started? Yeah! <laughs> That's me, Danny. <laughs> Awesome. How's it going, Danny? I'm good. How are you? Good. Let me get this uh, set up here. Hi. Hey, what's going on, big man? Uh, I got a hockey stick. Oh, you got a tax? Yeah. Nice. I, I, bought, I bought from the hockey store. From the hockey yeah. Store. yeah, that's the stick I use. I use the CCM tax. How? Yeah, it's old now. I just got it from college, but as many as I could because they're free. <laughs> so Danny, thanks for joining us here on Hockey Prodigy. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so let's get to know you a little bit. Um, other than hockey, what else interests you? Um, well, I just actually graduated from the University of Western Ontario. Um, it's in London, Ontario. It's uh, their teacher's college. So um, I'm all set to, to start teaching in, in, the, in the fall if schools open up due to all this COVID stuff. Um, so my two teachables are physical education and history, and I'm looking to teach at the high school level. So I think that coincides well with me being you know, a hockey instructor and, and owning a hockey school um, because you know, they're very transferable skills, you know, coaching on the ice and instructing on the ice and then teaching in the classroom. It's, you know, they're, very, they're very similar. Maybe the, the environment may be different, but the actual you know, process of teaching is the exact same. So. Yeah, um, and then some other of my interests, you know, I've, I've, I'm a huge sports guy. It's not just hockey. I, I played a variety of different sports growing up. Um, I played basketball, volleyball, ran track and field, played soccer, um, was a golfer. So I just enjoyed physical activity and uh, I, I, you know, I enjoyed, you know, the, the aspect of team sports. Um, I'm learning how to play the guitar and learning how to speak French. My brother actually speaks three languages, so I'm trying to you know, keep up with him. And I'm, I'm actually am from a French background, so I, you know, I feel obligated to you know, speak the language of, of my grandmother, who, who is French Canadian. So. That's awesome, Danny. Yeah, I know. Um, outside of you know learning new skills and developing, and language is hard, and it's one thing I've never been able to master other than really English. Um, segueing into coaching now, what would you say would be one of your largest accomplishments that led you up to this point? Um, well, being able to play. Um, College hockey or NCAA hockey uh, it was, was an uh, extremely uh, fulfilling thing and, and, and like um, one of my lifelong dreams uh, uh, during my hockey career was to play in the NCAA. I, I always was um, pretty focused on my academics in, in high school, and I wanted to pursue hockey while uh, you know achieving a, a degree in um, exercise science. So I had the opportunity to do that at Salem State University. We had a, a good team all four years I was there. We were able to win the conference championship twice, which was pretty cool, and then went on to the final 11 tournament, um, which was an unbelievable experience. You know, once you're the last 11 in the entire country out of 100 teams, you know, that's that's pretty cool to be able to say that you're in that category of, of the elite team. So I would say that would be our, would be my biggest accomplishment, um, was winning two conference championships and moving on to play in the, the NCAA final tournament. That's awesome. So, so how long have you been coaching for? I've been coaching for a long time. Since I've been 14, 15 years old, I had the opportunity to be a, an instructor at a, a numerous amount of camps. 
Um, and then once I graduated from Salem State University two years ago, I, I wanted to start my own hockey school, for the hockey. Um, with some of the stuff that I learned, from some of the great mentors that taught me at the hockey camps that I worked at. So I'm looking forward to, to be able to, to move forward or to kind of um, progress prolific hockey and uh, learn and teach, uh, teach the skill that I've learned um, through the great mentors I've had uh, and, and help all the players that I have at prolific hockey become better hockey players both on and off the ice. For sure. Now, I'm sure you've had a lot of good, talented players come through your doors overall. Now, what would you say separates, um, you know, a good, talented player to becoming a great player? Um, one thing for sure that I would say separates uh, a talented player to, to becoming a great player is um, their work ethic. If you look at all the, the great players um, in today's game at the NHL level, um, they, they all have a, a very um, dedicated work ethic to the game of hockey and, and to their craft and the mastering their craft. Um, I also think a positive as attitude is something that it goes very, very, very far when it comes to becoming a great hockey player because you need to have that sense of grit and resiliency if you want to you know, pursue a passion, something that you're passionate about and become the best at it. You know, there's going to be times in your career where you're going to have you know, so-called failures or obstacles in your way and having that positive attitude and belief in yourself that you can get through it no matter what the circumstances are, be able to rise above them and, and be successful. You touched on it briefly, uh, you mentioned work ethic. Now, when it comes to work ethic, what do you think is more important, your um, physical or mental training when it comes to progressing forward as an athlete? Uh, you know, interesting enough, most people will, will say one or the other. You know, some people will say the physical is more important than the mental or the mental is more important than the physical. And I have the opinion that both are equally important and they coincide with one another too. So, you know, the physical skills are extremely important, but if you don't have the mental toughness and resiliency to be, you know, to, to fight against adversity, then that's going to, you know, hinder your progress. Um, and if, if you don't, if you're mentally tough, but you don't work on your physical skills and trying to get better in that aspect of your game, then you're not going to be successful either. So you need to, you know, try to work on both of them and, and, and make sure that they're, you know, working together to get you to become the best player as you possibly can. You want to ask him a question? Say, hey, you can ask me anything, but it doesn't have to be that question. You can ask me something you want. You want to ask Coach Danny a different question? Hey, you, I thought you hockey so good this you. What's that, bud? I, I go to hockey school this you. You go to, you go to hockey school? Yeah. Nice. I saw that. You, I saw that you're a, a goalie too. What do you like better, player or goalie? Huh? I'm a player. Yeah, your parents would probably like that too. Goalies are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you like scoring goals? Yeah, that's the best part of hockey. That's the funnest, being able to score goals. Which really good stuff. But where do you shoot? I shoot with my stick. Are you lefty or righty? You're righty. Lefty. Lefty? Yeah, lefty. Yeah. Nice. So oh am I. I'm a lefty too. So they say lefties are always the best. <laughs> yeah, I was told that most players, like most um, players are right-handed and the only reason it is is because they walk into the pro shop and they go, I'm here to get my kid a stick. And they go, well, is he left-handed or right-handed? And because they write right-handed, they go, well, he's right-handed. They go, oh, the right-handed sticks are right over there. Well, like if you think about it this way, though, if you're right-handed dominant, you should shoot left because your top hand is your controlling hand, right? And that's your dominant right hand. So in reality, if you are right with your right hand, you should shoot left because that's that's the controlling hand of the stick. Yeah, that's what I told it. That's how I was growing up. Yeah, and that's the crazy. The reason I ended up being left-handed was my neighbor, he he was left-handed and all he had was left-handed sticks. Oh yeah. <laughs> or else I probably would have ended up being a righty. My dad actually made me play with a straight stick when I was growing up so I could learn how to handle the puck and then I could, then he could figure out what which side I was more dominant on. And then that's how I, he discovered if I was lefty or righty. See, that's smart. You, you let him decide instead of forcing it on him to figure out which side they're yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. My dad was a good hockey player too. He played D1 at Northern Michigan, so. Nice. Yeah. What's your favorite drill or exercise to work on off the ice? Um, 
My favorite drill is uh, anything to do with, with skating because in today's game, you have to be able to skate. Everyone is everyone is such an elite skater now, and everything is based off of whether you can, you know, you can fly out there. You got good edge work. You're able to, you know, um, use your edges to, to to be able to control the puck, um, protect the puck, um, be in possession of the puck because. That's what today's game is too. It's it's a it's a possession game. You want to have the puck on your stick at all time, and you want your team to have um, the possession the whole time because everyone's so skilled. You know, everyone can skate, everyone can shoot, everyone can pass, everyone can stick it. Everyone's smart. Everyone's so well trained now um, because of you know the advances in, in that aspect. So I think skating um, and the fundamentals of skating is the most important drill that any any player can can uh, work on. And you touched on it briefly with the puck control. Um, yeah, I really like those Instagram videos that you're posting online. Uh, you have one of, of, of Chris Playfield, and he's, he's talking about the stick handling, and I know Z and I really like seeing those skill development drills online and having an online platform that, you know, we can work at home and develop on our skills at home. Um, I know a lot of that is surrounded by COVID and what's going on right now, but do you think that online platform is going to continue for you as you know things get back to normal. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to continue it. It was it was mainly because we were wanted to be able to get our athletes to continue doing their drills and you know the ones that we train privately, semi private, and the ones that are going to attend our, our hockey camps. Um, but the response has been so great that uh, I think we're going to continually kind of run those weekly series as, as long as we can because. Uh, it's a great outlet to be able to help instruct kids and you know give them ideas to do at home while they're you know they're off they're off the ice and, and uh, looking for something to do. Um, so in the future, I think it's a great uh, a great way to be able to train you know athletes and it's a great platform to be able to do so effectively. Um, you know, Chris Playfair is is just awesome, right? You know, Memorial Cup champion with the Winter Spitfires, there, captain. So having someone like that, you know, part of the football team is also great because you know he's an elite hockey player, but also a, a great person and a great role model for for the kids to look up to. And when they see him demonstrating the drills, you know, there's nothing better than that. So talking about coaching and training players on the ice, who would be the one player that you would train if you had the opportunity to do so? Well, for me, that's easy. It would be Connor McDavid. Um, his work ethic and dedication to the game of hockey is second. Uh, not only is he arguably the most skilled hockey player in the world, but his uh, his work ethic is is some of the stories are insane. And I actually have uh, a good story of Connor McDavid's work ethic. One of my uh, roommates um, who lived with me and one of my to this day still a really good friend, probably one of my best friends. Um, grew up with Connor McDavid, with next door neighbors to him. It's kind of a funny relationship. Like he was kind of the he was buddies with Connor's older brother. So Connor was kind of like their, you know, like the little brother that would like tag along with them. Um, but uh, like my buddy Pooch uh, told me the story of, of, of Connor. So him and Cam, would, you know, in the summertime, would go out and they would do whatever they would do, go to buddies, have a school the park, do something for the whole day. And uh, Connor would be out eight o'clock in the morning on his roller blades, you know, working on his skills, going through the phone, shooting, shooting pucks, shooting tennis balls, whatever he, whatever he had. Um, and when they come back, he was still doing it. Like when it was dark, sun up, sun down. And he would do that every single day. And you know, when, when you hear stuff like that, and you, you, you know, you wonder like how is this guy, you know, you hear the phrase, this guy has so much God given talent. But you know, yeah, maybe he does have a lot of God given talent, but he puts the work in and he has been putting the work in since he's been, you know, this big, you know, he has that um, extreme dedication to his passion and to his craft. And there's no, there's no kind of mystery as to how he got good. He got good because he did it every single day and he did it the best of his abilities to be the best. Yeah, I think that's so true when it comes to a player's skill and their athleticism. I think there's a little bit of it that you're, you are born with. I mean, you have to be born with a passion towards anything, whether it's hockey or any other sport. But then I, I think it really goes down to like your your mentality and your willingness to put the effort into becoming a good player. And, you know, I playing hockey, there's been so many players that weren't the best on the ice, but they had more heart and more passion by by putting that into it, that their skill level progressed so much more than anyone else I even saw on the ice who was just able to do what they wanted to do and it's yeah and it's what it's that like that old saying right like talent uh or hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard 
And that, that's the truth. You know, I, there's been teams that I played on that have been extremely talented, but didn't work as hard you know, as a team that we played against that probably wasn't as skilled as we were and we, we lost. You know, and I could say I could say the opposite. You know, there's teams that we played um, that were much more talented than we were, but we just outworked them and we had a, a desire and a will to, to overcome, you know, the odds that were put against us and we wanted it more than they do. So that definitely is the thing. And especially when you get to that level in the NHL where you're playing with world class players everywhere. Everyone's got good skill. The, the separation level is like this. It's those who separate themselves from the good players to the great players. It's the work ethic and how much time they put into getting better. Getting back onto it, do you have any upcoming events that you're looking forward to here? Um, yeah, we have a, a summer camp scheduled um, for July 20th to 24th uh, at uh, Activa Sportsplex in uh, Kitchener, Ontario. Um, it's dependent upon what the restrictions are due to COVID uh, and set forth by the Ontario government. Um, so we're going to kind of see uh, what they are at the time of the camp and we're going to kind of go by by that because we want to make sure that all of our, our you know, not our staff and players are safe and healthy and um, while still being able to, to, you know, run the camp and uh, help players uh, progress with their skills and uh, on and off ice development. So if that means um, changing the camp up a little bit where it's only an hour session of on ice, an hour session of off ice, small groups, because currently uh, the, the restrictions are only allowed for five people on the ice. Um, so if that doesn't change by the time of the camp, then we're going to maybe run something a little bit different. Um, but we're still excited to be able to have the opportunity to run something and, and uh, get the camp going um, because uh, that's something that I look forward to uh, for the whole year, being able to run the summer camps. Do you, do you have any shout outs you want to you wanna call out while you're here or that we could link below? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you already have our Instagram, Facebook, and website in, in the links. Um, so, I mean, uh, our Instagram is uh, at Prolific Hockey, our Facebook is Prolific Hockey, and then our website is www.prolifichockey.ca. Um, one of our partnerships we have for our apparel is SDX, and you know, they've been awesome through the whole process of being able to get, you know, t-shirts and hats, uh, jumpsuits for, for our camps and for our instructors and athletes. So, you know, I, I uh, wanted to give them a shout out for being such an awesome partner in that whole process. And then just the, my prolific team as well, how, you know, the, everyone we got there has, has been awesome and so dedicated to what we're trying to do here. And um, and yeah, so I want to thank them for, for being a part of it and just doing all the right things that they're doing. Awesome. Well, you know, thank you, Danny, for joining us today. And we'll be sure to link all of that in the description below, um, you know, prolific hockey and then sticks as well. And, you know, we just want to be sure if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and check out more videos just like this. So, will you say thank you to Coach Danny? Thank you. Thanks for having me on, bud. Yeah, thank you.